Let's talk some John Wick. <laughs> I love the John Wick franchise. I remember the first film came out, caught everybody by surprise. It once again resurrected Keanu Reeves' career. Keanu Reeves has had two career resurrections, one with The Matrix, then he was, he was hot, and then he kind of faded away again to obscurity. And then all of a sudden, John Wick came out, and he was the man. Again, good Canadian kid, by the way. And all of a sudden, he's the man again, which is fantastic. I love this series. I thought two wasn't as good as one, but then three I loved, four I loved. And if you guys saw John Wick, you know it ends with kind of a way that maybe you wonder if there was going to be John Wick 5. Now, the director of John Wick uh, came out recently and talked about the fact that, you know, he's, there's been talks about John Wick 5, the studio's talked about and all that kind of stuff. Well, now the director is also saying Keanu Reeves himself is using the term, fuck yeah, about <laughs> doing John Wick 5. Uh, this comes with some CBR. Uh, Stilisky, who is, of course, the, the director of it, discussed Reeves' enthusiasm for the sequel on the Happy Sack Confused podcast. Yeah, Keanu and I have talked, he said. Keanu, if you ask him right now, Keanu, I should say, if you ask him right now, would you do John Wick 5? He'd be, fuck yeah. Uh, but then he'd look and go, well, what is it? I have no effing idea. And believe me, it's not like we're going to figure it out today. We have a lot of set pieces. We have a lot of ideas. We have lots of things that we didn't go or didn't do before. <laughs> I have no doubt that we'd come up with a lot of great pieces. I just, what's the main threat? Uh, we're about myths. It's like a fable. What's the message in the fable? What's the moral of the story? And I love the way Chad, the director, frames that because when, you're, when you look at the John Wick franchise, it's very much mythological. It is very, very much mythological. And when you're looking at John Wick, who's essentially an old-style kung fu uh, martial arts film of a ronin making his way through the countryside, fighting off all the enemies as the myth grows and the mythology of it grows. And I love the way he even says it. It's a fable. And in many ways, John Wick is. And I don't want the fable to end. Look, movies are experiential events. I always talk about that, right? And many, many different types of things can deliver the experience. Emotional romance, powerful biopic, great laugh out loud comedy, excitement and thrills and action. It's all about delivering an experience in whichever of those dozens of avenues you take. If you get to the destination of delivering a great experience to the audience, you've done it. And for me, in a John Wick film, to deliver that experience, all I need is more of those set pieces, man. All I need is more of those, you know, Japanese rooftop stairs in Paris, what, like whatever it is, I just need more of those experiences. I need more of that gung fu. And the great thing about the John Wick films is they build a mythology around all of it, right? Whether it's the continental or the high table or the coins or whatever it is, they build this great mythology and then pack it with these insane set pieces. And I just want to see John Wick doing more. So sign me up. I hope this happens. I think it will happen, especially when you look at the box office results that these films have had. Take a look at this. This is a film franchise that has the exact trajectory that studios want, but they don't always get. It keeps going up and up and up and up. That doesn't always happen. The first John Wick made 86 million, the second made 171 million, the third made 327 million, and the fourth made $428 million. An R-rated, very R-rated in many ways, um, like action film, and of course they're going to do a fifth one and I'm going to be all for it. And I love that, you know, the director and counter are going to say, but we still got a nail. What's it about? What's our new layer of the mythology here? What's the new threat? What are we battling against? We have peace with the high table. So what comes after that? I like that they're asking those questions, but I have no doubt this is going to happen. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, 
HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with HelloFresh. HelloFresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard part and you get to take the credit. HelloFresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door. So this fall, skip that extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. Like we've mentioned before, Ann and I are both working professionals and mealtime is sometimes a bit stressful. That's why we absolutely love HelloFresh. It's nutritious, it's delicious, and we actually have a really good time making dinner together. So guys, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Campia and use the code 50 Campia for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 Campia and use the code 50 Campia. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. But anyway, Chris, you read the comments here. Look, there, there could be a good argument to be made. Listen, it's had four chapters. Yeah. It, it's time to put it to bed. Let's move on. You don't want to run it into the ground. Mm -hmm. Quit while you're ahead could be an idea. Sure. What do you think about the comments? Do you think they should move forward with this franchise and do more? And do you think they will move forward with this franchise and do more? What do you think? Yes and yes. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Because to your point here, not only is it this action movie that's rated R that continues to make more money than the last one, it's an action movie that's rated R that's incredibly technical, that is beautifully shot, that yes. has wonderful cast members that stays within a reasonable budget. Yeah, That's one of the reasons why this franchise has been able to thrive so much too, is they're not going just bananas and taking people to space with duct tape. Like they are <laughs> sticking to what they need to do and building that mythos out more. So there's a lot of reasons for a studio to wanna do this. For fans too, I feel like these just keep getting better. And while, I mean, this is pretty far out, spoilers, spoilers you've been warned i didn't get warned at cinema con someone told me exactly what happened the minute i got in my uber and i went <laughs> oh yeah that came out yesterday i haven't seen it uh, but you know speaking of resurrection it already is really hinted at that sean survived you know well the director talked about that right there that was they a actually cut scene shot, yeah they shot a scene showing that john survived it's very i am legend of this is what happened, but it didn't test well with audiences, so there's that. But even in this cut, if you take this cut for what it is as canon, we've got little things like the dog noticing something's amok. Mm -hmm. We've got that line early on, too, of John Wick is just a ghost searching for a graveyard, mm -hmm. which is very much maybe just, oh, that's the plan. He's going to fake his own death. He's going to try to get away from this life finally, because that's what he's been trying to do. But the price on his head just keeps gaining and gaining and gaining. So he had to do something, right? And also, when you go to that graveyard, that's not fresh grass. Mm -hmm. yep. No, it is not. That's been buried for a while. So there's <laughs> a lot of things that could be happening here that mean that he didn't die, in addition to the director's cut that didn't end up in there. I think people love this franchise. People freaking love Keanu Reeves. He has so much fun doing these movies. I want more of them. And to your point, too, as long as they continue to be good, as long as they continue to build on this mythos, because that first movie, the minute they started exchanging coins, I wanted to know everything about that yeah. i was fascinated by that and then when it was well you're in luck chris there's so many more of these i was like ah! i want to know more about this and i want this movie franchise to continue great can you look up for me see if you can find a stat on this mm -hmm. i want to know what is the body count in the overall john wick franchise okay. how many people they killed that, that but you bring up the coin thing i really would love an answer to this from somebody a great Bob Odenkirk movie came out in the pandemic. Nobody. 439. 439 yeah, people sorry. died. That's a big labor shortage for the high table of assassins because mm -hmm. he's killed all of them. They're all dead. Yeah. But, you know, the makers of John Wick made nobody right. with Bob Odenkirk, which more people needed to see because it's wonderful. They never say it explicitly, but there are so many similarities and apparent phantom connections between the world of nobody and John Wick, including, you brought it up, Chris, the coins. Also, the, yep. now, I don't know if they looked exactly the same or not, but the principle is there, right? That all these things line up. I would love somebody to come out and just officially say, no, the worlds of nobody and John Wick are not connected, or yes, they actually are. That Bob Odenkirk plays a guy who, though they never call it the table, 
was a person who served the table and was all, I mean, and then maybe granted nobody is not nearly as possible as, as popular as John Wick. More people need to see nobody, but oh my God, can you imagine if they did John Wick five and they made it a nobody and John Wick crossover <laughs> I, again, nobody wasn't a huge box office success. It kind of looks like they use the same font too in the poster. <laughs> I, I, I haven't to see. You would notice that. I did not notice that. I would drool right up until that movie came out. I would be so excited to see Bob Odenkirk and Keanu Reeves on screen together, oh, ripping yeah. through fools. I I have a, like one request. Let's bring back Halle Berry and close her story because they were supposed to give her a spin. I think the original plan was she was going to get a spinoff. I thought something. so. Yeah. And then it never actually happened. Yeah, and I also like the new tracker too, the one with the dog. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, yeah. he's in he's Invasion. Great. He's he's great in Invasion. Invasion's not that. Why good. do you always got to bring up? Stop trying to make Invasion a thing. But you Nobody know what? Cares he about because invasion. he's like front and center there, and I really like. Okay, this actor. but to be fair, he hasn't brought up the terminal. Mm, so oh, it might be a trade off. I can That's fit that true. in anywhere. <laughs> Ready go. One or the other. Oh. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.